Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. In this video, you're checking out my updated solo XP grinding guide for the Elder Scrolls Online in 2020. In this video, I'll be showing off 10 hidden and out of the way locations that very few people know about, some of which you can only unlock by beginning certain side quests in ESO. And all of these locations have amazing experience gaining potential per hour. To make it even easier, I've chosen only base game locations to make sure you can unlock these spots on any character regardless of level or what DLCs you own. So if you're tired of the crowds or you just want to explore some new locations while getting some pretty quick levels or champion points at the same time, then this is the guide for you. Stick around because my top 10 secret XP grind spots for ESO are coming up right now. Coming up first, we're in the zone of Stone Falls at a location called Fort Virak all the way in the northwest corner of the zone. So this does take a little bit of walking to get to, but that's uh, why it's so great. Not a lot of people know about this location because they haven't gone this far in the zone. So there's many, many enemies here in this location. It's absolutely huge. And what's nice is you can choose to pull as few or as many mobs as you want. Basically, if you're a lower level, you might just pick two or three enemies at once. Um, but if you're higher level or you're trying to get champion points, Pull the entire set of groups. There's probably four or five groups you can pull at once. Circle them all together and drop down some AoEs and you'll get tons and tons of experience coming in. Now there's different areas of the fort. I like to start over in the corner uh, by the gate and then come towards the middle like I am here. There's another very large group you can pull at the middle if you want to get as much experience as possible. And of course, the other really great thing about this area is that the enemies spawn super fast. Just keep moving in a circle and the enemies should start resetting themselves. For our number nine location, we are in Shadowfen at Deep Graves. In this location, we're fighting Wisps. Now, what's cool about this is that Wisps are basically melee enemies in the Elder Scrolls Online, that means they don't, you know, hang around in the back or try to shoot you from range. They'll basically follow you wherever you go, and that makes grouping them up very, very easy. Uh, at this location, there's just tons of wisps hanging out in the middle of this pyramid. Uh, there's a lot around the outside as well. So just group up as many as you can see. Use a range attack, either a staff or a bow. Put them all in a circle and then drop some AoEs on the ground. The wisps don't have a lot of hit points. They don't hit for very hard either, so they're super easy to take on no matter what level you are. Once you finish the interior of the pyramid, I like to go on the outside here around the uh, north side. And then there's a bunch more that you can just grab and put together in the middle. Then we come around the back side, the east side of the pyramid. There's even more over here. And you might even find some extra enemies like some giant snakes. Feel free to pull those in as well. They're, everything here is great experience. Uh, and everything is melee as well, so very easy just to add stuff to your pile. You can see there's a third group here on the east side. Two more giant snakes. Just grab those as well. Come back up the hill. Uh, finish off the last few wisps. Then I'll just come around the other side and start all over again. For our number eight location, we're in Reaper's March at a place called Dune that's over on the east side of the zone. Uh, there's some very interesting quest lines in here. Now you don't have to do the quests to get access to the mobs. And what we have here is a lot of Daedra. So we've got the clan fears and well as the Daedras. And why I like these guys is they both give you bonus experience. Not a lot of people know this, but enemies in ESO that have higher health actually have bonus experience modifiers. So in this case, the clan fears have a little bit extra health. They give you 50% bonus experience. And the Daedras have a lot of extra health. They actually give you double the experience of a regular enemy. So even though there's not a ton of them here in this location, everything here is giving you bonus experience, which makes up for it. So as you can see, we have several little pockets of enemies. You just want to bring them all in with your either, again, staff or bow. I like the clan fears here because they do jump right to you. It makes pulling them super easy. Just make sure you don't get knocked down by that leap attack. More enemies here in the back by the crafting stations. Make sure you don't miss these guys here by the water. Bring them all in. If you have an ultimate, it's great to drop those on the Daedros because, again, they do have larger health. One thing to know is you can do the quest here for some bonus experience. But if you actually complete the quest, then the enemies will go away. So... If you like this grind spot, then I definitely recommend just leaving that quest open. 
until you are done with it. Well, that brings us to location number seven. And for this, we're in Cold Harbor. A lot of people know about Cold Harbor as far as grinding zombies, but not a lot of people know about this location called the Cliffs of Failure. Uh, this is a quest location that is on the eastern side of the map. Uh, you talk to the observer here. I love this guy. <laughs> he doesn't even bother looking at you. He's a pretty intense NPC. Uh, but go ahead and start the quest, and then it'll take you to this uh, battleground, the battleground antechamber. So walk through the main uh, portal entrance right here, and you'll eventually get to some enemies fighting uh, in the main area right here. So it's basically taking you across the canyon, and there's several really nice grinding locations here. Now, I prefer the middle, which you're seeing right now, and that's because everything here is basically a melee enemy. Uh, you can go up the sides, up the hill a little bit more, but then you'll start to deal with like archers and mages, which are a little bit more troublesome to deal with. So just grab all the skeletons, uh, grab all the soldiers here in this area, group them up, and then as usual, use your AoEs. There's a second pull further up the path. Grab all the enemies that you see and, and bring them close to you because there's quite a few here. There's even some behind you. There's a third group of spawns as you get closer to the cliff. So I'd like to grab those as well. That's going to be my third pull right here next to the lake. Let's go ahead and group those guys up. Once you get that third pull down, there's essentially a fourth pull that you can bring some enemies down from the stairs, uh, as you can see over here, and some enemies in the middle. I'll go ahead and drop my ultimate uh, on them. Why not? They are undead, so if you have Fighter's Guild passives, you can get ultimate pretty fast here. As you can see, the front enemies have already respawned. So I'm going to go ahead and circle around and just start over again. Spot number six brings us to the Vile Mance, which is the public dungeon in the zone of Reaper's March. Uh, there is a pretty interesting quest here. I'm not going to spoil it. Uh, basically, you start the quest to enter the public dungeon. You'll head to the basement. The basement's actually not bad as far as grinding. There's tons of mobs that you can run here in the circle. But it can be a little bit crowded because people know about this area. What a lot of people don't know, however, is there is a quest line that goes beneath the basement. You just drop into this giant hole in the floor to start that quest. So in this area, you have even more enemies. Uh, instead of the Imperials, you now have a mix of Imperial soldiers and undead. And what I like about this is it's a very tight circle. As you can see on the map here, um, you can just run in that little circle and there's lots and lots of enemy spawns really packed tightly together. So you head down into the cavern. I like to head left. That's just my preference. So you see I'll deal with another group here. A lot of undead enemies so you can get some nice ultimate generation here. If you have the Fighter's Guild passives again. I'm going to continue heading to the left. I have a few more small groups uh, that I'm just going to finish off quickly here. And I'm going to pull this group into the main chamber, and there's two additional groups. So what you have here is a massive pull of experience, uh, gold and loot in one location. Make sure you save up your ultimate for that, because that's going to be a big help. And that's pretty much it. You can continue up through the cavern. It does make a quick circle back around, and the enemy should start respawning right away. Now up to number five, we're in green shade at a location called the Moonhenge. A pretty interesting quest line here. You basically have a bunch of invading Daedra uh, trying to come into Tamriel. You can see they're all along the hillside here, which makes great experience even before we get to the quest objective. I like the clan fears. As I said, those give 50% bonus experience modifier because they have slightly more health. So I do like to focus on those. Uh, there are several Dramora soldiers, though. You can just include those as you grind your way up the hill. I always see more clan fears here again, so I'm just going to group those up uh, together and then pick off these soldiers as well. Just drop my AoEs on the ground to take care of everything at once. Now, once we work our way up to the top of the hill, this is where a uh, quest unlocks a special area for us. Uh, basically, you kill a couple enemies here, and then you can enter a portal to your very own plane, uh, the Isles of Torment. 
Now, what's great about this is it has additional Daedra for you to fight. We have some of those Daedras, which remember, those are double experience. Uh, lots of regular clan fears and Dramora here as well. So uh, just group those up as usual. Use your AoEs to get them down. Remember, the Daedras do have slightly more health, so you may want to focus on them. But this location is amazing. You basically have your own grind spot, your own plane of grinding uh, that you created for yourself. Uh, so I love it. I like this middle pool. There's tons of enemies here. Uh, there are even some boss enemies that have to do with the storyline. Those give you bonus experience modifiers as well. Now, of course, like any of these quests, uh, you can complete the story quest, the little side quest here, if you want for some bonus experience. Uh, but if you do that, the plane actually gets shut down. You won't be able to go back here if you complete the quest, so just keep that in mind. Uh, you may want to leave this quest open for a while if you like this particular grind spot. Number four is a really cool location. We're in the zone of Shadowfen, and you might have heard of the Black Rose Prison from the Merc Mario DLC, but did you know there's also a White Rose Prison in the zone of Shadowfen? In this location, you have some uh, prisoners who have turned to feral, meaning they're basically attacking everything they see. And this is what we're gonna use for our XP grinding. Now on the outside of the prison, you see these uh, feral prisoners all over the place. This is definitely a good place to grind those. They are undead, of course, so you get some extra bonuses for that. You can continue up the hillside. There's a second pretty large pool here on the pathway. You can go ahead and take care of those. And then there's a third pole here uh, in the camps and behind the camps uh, where you can get even more enemies. The spawns are fairly quick, so this is a nice basic grind. But what's cool is if you complete the quest, if you go through the actions of the quest, you actually unlock a second location here where you actually go inside the White Rose prison. And of course, there's more enemies inside the prison for you to grind. So heading inside the prison, you'll see more of those feral prisoners. There's a lot of groups of them, so just go through each group, get them down quickly, and uh, move on to the next group. If you clear out the entire prison, uh, you can also go back outside. You can grind the mobs outside and then go back inside. On to number three, we're in the zone of Malleable Tor, close to the Bandari trading post. Uh, we have a mercenary camp here, just to the east of the town. And this is really interesting because in this case, we have a group of what I would call neutral NPCs. Uh, they're here highlighted in yellow. This means if you kill these NPCs, you don't get anything added to your bounty. Also, if you get close and you have some sort of damaging effects, like I have Hurricane here on my Stamina Sorcerer, they're just going to aggro you uh, anyways. So the amazing thing about this location is there's just so many of these mercenaries all over the place. There's several large poles you can do. You can start at the north side of the camp, work your way into the middle. You can see there's another massive pole here and you continue to the south side of the camp. Uh, there's another third pole there uh, with more enemies that you can group up. And of course, like any great grinding location, the respawn time here is super, super fast. So by the time you clear your way from the north to the south side of the camp, the enemies at the north side should be respawning already, uh, meaning if you keep this up, you have an absolutely insane experience grind here. This is one of my favorites by far. Now our number two location, we're back in Cold Harbor. Over on the southwest side of the zone, Haj Uzith is a Argonian encampment here in Cold Harbor, and this does have a side quest, pretty interesting side quest that you can start to unlock this area. So you just talk to the tree minder here, listen to their conversation, and then you want to take the uh, trial of the body quest line. Talk to the second NPC, and then this is going to unlock the pyramid for you. It's called the Sap Collection Facility. And underneath here, kind of a surprise, there's tons of Dramora enemies, tons of Daedra in here. They all have an incredibly fast respawn time. So I like to divide this into about two to three groups, uh, pulling them together in a central location. If you try to pull too many, uh, they will reset. They'll run back to their initial spawn. So that's why you need to kind of divide it up. So figure out 
How you want to divide that, again, I think maybe two to three pulls is the way to do it, kind of around the corners and around the stairs. That's how I do it, at least. But if you're trying to work on Fighter's Guild, this is an amazing route to run. You get tons of Fighter's Guild experience, uh, good experience overall, good loot. And really, almost nobody knows about this because you have to unlock the quest first to get access to this. So it's one of my top spots for sure. All right, everybody, on to the number one location, my favorite location of all time. I have uh, leveled several characters here. We're in Glenumbra, just south of Camlorn, which is this castle on the north side of the zone. And there's this little fort here. It doesn't even have a marked location on your map, but it looks like this. And uh, there is a quest line that's important here. So you need to talk to the general to get it started. Uh, you won't actually be able to enter the fort until you talk to him. So go ahead and go through that dialogue. And then we're going to group up with this uh, NPC here called Shaza. And she's going to kick off the quest for us. Now, what's really interesting about this is the quest line actually spawns enemies for you to fight. Shaza will go th on this pathway. And every time she stops, she's going to summon two waves of werewolves. Now, werewolves are basically very similar to clan fears in that they have extra health meaning they get you bonus experience. They give you actually 50% more experience than a normal enemy in the game does. So already that makes them great for grinding. Uh, so that was the initial spawn right there. She did spawn two waves. And then while you're going through the waves, you wanna just make sure to kill off any werewolves that spawn on the sides. Here she's at the second location. Any extra wolves that are off on the side, I'm gonna bring those into the center where she is fighting and I'm gonna drop AoEs on everybody. Here's the third location where she stops. Again, she's gonna spawn two war waves here. Now a tip for this location that can be really helpful is either run a ranged taunt or a back bar ice staff. That's gonna make it much easier to get these little wolves on the side that are busy fighting the soldiers. You can just bring them in with a taunt to the center. You don't have to do that, but it does save you a couple seconds. Now here we are on the fourth wave location. Again, she's gonna spawn two waves of enemies here. Now you might think the quest is over uh, and you might be tempted to end the quest there, but don't do it. What I do is I actually work my way back through the spawns. They spawn so fast that they should be up again already. Uh, those little spawns on the side. I'll usually get four to six werewolves here on my way back to the start. Kill those off very quickly. And then I'm actually going to exit the fort. You can either go through the gate or run up the tower and out. And I'm just going to go into my quests. And I'm going to drop the quest. Basically just abandon the quest talk to the general outside, and you can start the waves all over again. So this is why I love this uh, quest and this grind location, because you control the waves. You control when you want to grind in this spot. That's what makes it really cool and unique, in my opinion. And with that said, that's going to wrap up our top 10 secret hidden grind locations in ESO. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you crush that like button. I hope you did, because this video was a lot of fun to put together. Of course, make sure you're subscribed to the channel if you're not already. I have many, many more beginner guides as well as build videos on my channel. So make sure you check those out as well. As always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great day and I will see you around in the next video.